Okay, excellent. All right, good afternoon. Um, I think you all saw the Secretary General in the um, Security Council this morning uh, renewing his call for peace as he marked the sad and tragic milestone of six months since Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Um, he briefed uh, on the, his visit to the country last week, and he said that the Black Sea Grain Initiative, which he witnessed in action in Odessa and Istanbul, is a powerful demonstration of what can be achieved in the most devastating of contexts when we put people first adding that getting much more food and fertilizer out of Ukraine and Russia at reasonable costs is vital to further calm commodity markets and lower prices for consumers. Rosemary DiCarlo, the head of the political and peace building um, uh, department, uh, also addressed uh, the Security Council members in reminding them that today's grim anniversary coincided with Ukraine's National Day. Uh, their remarks were shared with you. Uh, just a quick humanitarian update. Um, our humanitarian coordinator in Ukraine, Denise Brown, today commended the work of humanitarian workers who have provided assistance to approximately 12 million people in all regions of Ukraine. However, only one million of the people reached live in areas not controlled by uh, the government of uh, Ukraine. Uh, in those areas, humanitarian assistance has been extremely limited and in some cases impossible. The Secretary General told the Security Council it is imperative that humanitarians in Ukraine have safe and unhindered access to all people requiring assistance, no matter where they live. Today, almost 60% of the $4.3 billion requested on the humanitarian flash appeal for Ukraine has been received. And on his way into the Council, the Secretary General uh, told, uh, said a few words about the situation in Ethiopia saying that he was deeply shocked and saddened by the news of resumption of hostilities in the country. Ethiopians, Tigrayans, Amharans, Oromos, Afars have all already suffered too much, he added. The Secretary General made a strong appeal for an immediate cessation of hostilities and the resumption of peace talks between the government and the TPLF, with the full guarantee of humanitarian access to people in need and the reestablishment of public services. Just a quick reminder of that context, uh, Ethiopia is facing a very difficult humanitarian situation, to say the least. The country is facing its worst drought in the past 40 years. 17 million people are now targeted for assistance as worsening levels of malnutrition are reported. More than 3.5 million heads of livestock have died. Over 24 million people have received humanitarian assistance this year in Ethiopia, including more than 20 million people receiving food aid, more than 3 million have received agricultural assistance, and more than 3 million have received water, sanitation, and hygiene services. Parts of the country face a risk of flooding in the coming weeks. More than 1.7 million people are likely to be impacted, including more than 400,000 men, women, and children at risk of displacement. In a positive uh, note, uh, a few days ago, on the 20th of, of August, 840 tons of fertilizer arrived in Tigray to support farmers in the planting season. However, we are very concerned for the civilians in frontline areas and call on all parties to adhere to their obligations under international humanitarian law to ensure their protection. And just an example of uh, what the impact of the renewed fighting is having uh, this morning on August 24th, a uh, World Food Program warehouse in Michele was forcibly entered by Tigrayan forces who took 12 fuel trucks, tankers, with 570,000 liters of fuel. The team on the ground unsuccessfully tried to prevent this looting. These stocks of fuel were to be used solely for humanitarian purposes with the distribution of food, fertilizer, and other emergency relief items. This loss of fuel will impact humanitarian operations in supporting communities in all of northern Ethiopia. Uh, we condemn any looting or confiscation of humanitarian goods or humanitarian premises. And we call on all parties to uphold their obligations under international humanitarian law and to respect humanitarian personnel, activities, assets, and goods. Uh, I was asked a couple of days ago about the situation in Iraq and I can tell you that the Secretary General Special Representative for Iraq, Janine hennis plachert is in contact with all relevant parties, encouraging them to de-escalate tensions and commit to a dialogue aimed at resolving differences and restoring stability in the interest of the Iraqi people. While the right to peaceful protest must be upheld at all times, 
acting in compliance with the Constitution and respecting state institutions are also essential for resolving the current situation. And turning to the Central African Republic, the UN peacekeeping force there has deployed long and medium range patrols as well as surveillance flights. Uh, this is in response to alleged allegations of an armed group presence around Ndele in the country's northeast. In the east of the Mbomu prefecture, the mission is providing financial, logistical, and security support to national disarmament and demobilization operations. This has resulted in the processing of 101 ex-combatants, including 17 women in Bangasu. Operations will be rolled out in Rafai, Gambo, Wango, until 5 September for the first time in these localities since the launch of the National Disarmament Demobilization Reintegration Program in December of 2018. And in Algeria, the UN team on the ground sent out an appeal for increased support uh, from the international community to boost life-saving assistance to some 90,000 Sahrawi refugees risking food insecurity and malnutrition. The consistent support from the government and other donors is now regrettably insufficient to meet the current needs as our UN team and other humanitarian actors are facing significant funding gaps top, uh, topped by the impacts of the pandemic, the subsequent global rise in food and fuel prices, and the impact of the war in Ukraine. Funds requiring food assistance alone doubled to $39 million this year compared to $19.8 million before the pandemic. This, the forced 75% reduction of WFP's life-saving monthly rations is particularly concerning as it is less than half of the recommended daily intake of calories per person. Each beneficiary uh, receives less than five kilograms compared to the planned 17 kilograms of food per person per month. And uh, Iftikhar had asked a question about Pakistan yesterday. Um, regarding the authority, our support to the authorities' response to recent heavy flooding. The UN team, led by the uh, resident humanitarian coordinator, Julian Harness, is boosting support to authorities in the most impacted provinces of Baluchistan and Sindh. To date, UN team has mobilized $7 million to respond to the floods and has provided 1,100 metric tons of food rations, therapeutic feed, and nutritional supplement. It also provided medicine, water purification tablets, tents, mosquitoes, nets, blankets, soaps, hygienes, dignity kits, and newborn baby kits, tarpaulins, and other goods. Following the rapid assessment, a response plan is being finalized to coordinate the joint response and call for further resources, including possibly from the Central Emergency Response Fund. And lastly, just going next door to, Pakistan, to Afghanistan, also on floods, our humanitarian colleagues tell us that over the past week, Heavy rains and flash floods have affected several provinces across the eastern, central, southeastern, and southern and western regions, impacting more than 8,200 families. We and our humanitarian partners have deployed assessment teams to identify the affected areas. Uh, the teams are providing life-saving assistance to people, including food, water, sanitation, tents, health care services, psychosocial support, and essential supplies. Yes, sir. Hi, Steph. Uh, several questions. First, on Ukraine. Uh, yesterday, the Ukrainian mission uh, gave the proposal that uh, uh, the IAEA could have a permanent uh, mission stay in Zaporizhia uh, nuclear plant until the Ukrainian uh, government ha uh, restore its uh, its control over that plant. Uh, does does the UN support that that the idea? I mean, that, that's a very good question. It's it's one for the IAEA. It is their mandate. Uh, they, within the UN system, are responsible uh, for nuclear safety and, and anything having to do with nuclear energy. So they will, uh, they are in the lead in the discussions. We are there in the supporting uh, logistics and security role. So if they decided to do that, the UN will support? We, we will, it, it is, we will do whatever we can to support the IEA in the implementation of its mandate. And another thing uh, today's Secretary General mentioned that concerned him in Ukraine is the fact of finding mission of Alenivka. Uh, since last time you 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 announced the uh, the, the the people uh, in that fact fact finding mission, it, it, is there any update? The the discussions are ongoing. Uh, I mean, the, the last thing I would want to do is keep for myself any news of that mission going. So as soon as we get green lights, uh, we will announce it. Linda. 
Uh, thanks, Steph. First, I'll follow up on Edward's question. What does it uh, require for the IAEA to be there permanently? Approval from both Russia and Ukraine or the Security Council uh, decision? No, I, I don't... Uh I do not believe it requires any Security Council uh, decision. The, the IEA has a mandate when it comes to nuclear energy. Uh, what guarantees they will require, again, I, I would ask your indulgence and have your colleagues in Vienna ask them. I have a couple of other questions. Yep. Both Russia and Ukraine publicly say that they welcome a mission from the IAEA to uh, visit the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Uh, but you are saying that you are waiting for assurances. Is this not what you're hearing well, from them the, behind closed doors? No, I, I think there, there, there's, I think no one is doubting uh, the willingness and the, the, the welcome match, so to speak, uh, expressed by both the Russian Federation and, and, and Ukraine. But obviously, uh, there is the, the, the there's, their stance, which is clear, but there's a lot of uh, uh, nuts and bolts that have to be worked out uh, for us to get to a place where uh, we feel it is safe uh, for them to, to be accompanied from Ukraine. So does that mean that the UN does not feel safe enough to get there? No, what it means is that the, discussion, the discussions are ongoing. And can yeah. I have one more question? Of uh, President of Ukraine, uh, Zelensky, proposed to hold uh, a summit which was, pro which was proposed before by the SG himself, the Summit of Future. He proposed that, um, Zelensky proposed that it uh, should be held in Kiev in 2023. What is your reaction I, I don't, to that? I don't really have any comment on it. Obviously, the, the Summit of the Future is an idea put forward by, by the Secretary General, uh, which has received a lot of support from, from member states. Where it will be held is not uh, something that is yet decided. Linda. Thank you, Steph. This is sort of a big picture question. There seems over the past uh, couple of weeks that there's more, the word Crimea and the Russian withdrawal from Crimea um, has been, at least by the Ukrainians and some of the question, other countries, that the Russian withdrawal from Crimea should be part of any negotiated settlement, a pol pol political solution, something I think that was not discussed in the early days. My question is, the, does the SG, I know he's not involved in negotiations, but is this something he might agree with or disagree with in terms of there be a resolution of the Crimea process as part, as part of this overall uh, uh, agreement? A, a couple of things. One, it's not for him to tell the parties what is acceptable or not acceptable, right? It, as in any negotiations, when and, when and if they happen, it would be up to them to decide. Our principle is guided by uh, the General Assembly uh, resolution uh, passed, I think, I believe in, in 2014, on the territorial integrity of, uh, of Ukraine. And that remains our, our principle. But, you know, what details will be discussed when in, 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 uh, in, in, in negotiations, I, 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 I don't have a crystal ball and I, I just don't know. Edward. Sorry, I have two more questions, yeah. actually. Uh, yesterday, the U.S. military conducted an airstrike I in Syria, uh, targeted Iranian-backed groups in Deir ez-Zor. Uh, does the U.N. think it's appropriate for the United States to do so? Look, I think we're obviously very much aware of these, uh, these, these airstrikes. Uh, I mean, our concern is that the very volatile nature of the situation in the region. And our call is the same for all the players that are involved in, in Syria, and that is for them to exercise restraint and avoid escalation. Do you think it's a violation of uh, sovereignty and international uh, uh, territory? We've, we've, always, uh, we've always been strong proponents and, and vocal in defending the territorial integrity of Syria. Okay, uh, sorry. Actually, one last question. Yeah. Uh, one more. Just, just one last. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, okay. It's, it's, it's. Uh, uh, this week, Kenya announced uh, they they have they will send uh, two hundred peacekeepers to MINUSCO, I mean, uh, to Congo uh, peacekeeping mission. Does that mean the the tension there in the in the Congo uh, the 
peacekeeping mission has been uh, with I mean with the with the government of 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 uh, P, uh, DRC has has been um, de-escalated or. I mean the the uh, the situation in um, the situation in the east of the Congo remains uh, tense and uh, and volatile. Okay. Uh, hasta what day is today? Wednesday. What? Wednesday? Hasta how do you say? Oh, jueves. Hasta jueves. Hasta jueves. A jeudi. Evelyn, did you have a question? Uh, yes, briefly. Sorry, Do go ahead. Have, Sorry, Evelyn. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Hi. Uh, can, um, do you have any information on any any uh, strikes along the route that the IEA inspectors might take to get to the nuclear plant? Because they're they're going to have to be safe. Do you know if there have been any more airstrikes? I, I mean, I know the, the it, would, it would involve involved. it would involve crossing front lines, which is always challenging uh, and difficult. And that's why this whole process is taking a bit of time. But I don't have any uh, battlefield fresh battlefield assessment to share with you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>